Welcome back. I'm Loretta from Hayes Sewing Machine Company here in Wilmington, Delaware. And this is going to be the next in our creative uh, techniques videos. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you an easy way of creating a binding by flipping your backing over. And one of the reasons why you might want to do this technique uh, number one, it's fast, so if you're trying to finish up those unfinished projects, really good way of doing it. Um, the other thing is that you can create a binding of any size. So if you would like a bigger, bolder binding, this is a terrific way of doing it. And I'm going to show you how to miter a corner and make a beautiful miter corner with no math, because Loretta is not the math girl. So let's start out with uh, taking a look at our quilt. So this quilt is actually one of my COVID quilts. Uh, when we were in lockdown, like a lot of you, I went through my studio and I took and uh, dumped all the drawers in my studio and went through and reorganized them, um, which was kind of an interesting thing. I counted, I had like 50 drawers and in individual st stuff. and. I found some kind of shocking things. Um, you know, I grew up in the sewing machine industry, so I'm all about the sewing machine. Um, when I eventually got all of my hand needles uh, into one um, drawer, um, like a thousand uh, hand needles. Shocking, like, you know, I barely do any hand work. Um, the other interesting thing uh, was I found uh, about 30 pairs of googly eyes. Um, you know, some here, some there. Now, I would not say that I am a craft googly eye person, um, but hey, you know, that's what found out. So the other thing that I found in my turfing drawers is I found a tremendous number of what I would refer to as orphan blocks. So that's where these blocks came from. Um, <clears throat> if you feel bad about your unfinished projects, ladies, let me make you feel better. I found hundreds of these blocks in varying colors and about two different sizes of them. And I do not ever remember making these blocks. So I have a drawer now that has just all of my, you know, blocks that are waiting to be finished. And all I did for this quilt is I picked out some ones that I thought were kind of interesting. Um, I found in my stash uh, a gray uh, fabric kind of print. Uh, I simply measured this block and cut appropriate blocks to that. And, you know, when I went to do the borders, uh, I'll tell you this because you can understand this. Uh, I didn't have enough of the light gray fabric, so I went and I found another gray fabric. So that's our secret. You know, if it looks okay, guys, it, if, it, if it looks like it was planned, you can go ahead and do anything you would like. There's no rules to quilting on here. So all I did is I went ahead and I sewed them in rows. Uh, when I quilted it, I simply quilted it on the diagonal in the gray. Uh, just did a quick kind of walking foot uh, quilting technique there. So this is what your quilt is going to be looking like when you are ready to start your binding. So if you look down on this edge, uh, you're going to have your leftover batting and you're going to have your leftover backing. So the first thing that you're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to trim the batting even to the surface of the quilt. So we're going to come in and this is one of those things that we need to do carefully, not quickly. This is a quick binding technique, but this is not the step to be quick about. And really the only place that you kind of want to pay attention if you have quilted from edge to edge, so on mine, I've got, like I started here on the edge and then I went across and I stopped on the edge on the other side. So this is where your scissors will sometimes get hooked up in your backing and you might nick your backing. So that's where you want to pay a lot of attention. I kind of put my fingers underneath the batting so I'm sure I'm not cutting that backing piece. And you'll notice that I'll slow down when I get to those quilting intersections so that I'm absolutely sure that I'm not going to nick the backing. And if you know that this is what you're going to do, if you're like, oh, I'm going to try that technique on my quilt, but I haven't quilted it yet, just a little tip. 
Um, when we do edge-to-edge -edge quilting and we do a standard binding where we are taking an extra piece of fabric and binding it with that, we tend to drift off into the batting because we're going to cut that off and the, the binding is going to cover it. Whenever you're doing this technique, you really want to start right on the edge of the fabric and stop right on the edge of the fabric. If we drift off, we do have a tendency to have to seam ripper that little piece and we don't want to have to seam ripper if we don't need to. So we're going to go along and we're going to trim all the way around so your quilt is going to have no batting showing and you're going to be looking at your backing piece of fabric. So at this point you need to decide how big a uh, binding we're going to do. And what I do is I usually will audition it. So I'll fold up my fabric, just kind of roll it, and I'll kind of check it out. Um, I can take a look, that's about a one inch binding. If I fold it a little bit more, that's like three quarters. I could audition it and maybe come and do a two inch binding. So you just wanna kinda of check it out. The only math to this binding is that you need double the amount of fabric of what you want to have finished. So in other words, if you want a one inch binding, which is what I'm gonna to do today, you need to have two inches of fabric all the way around the quilt. So if you're short on one side, so let's say you only have an inch and a half of fabric on that side, that's gonna determine that, okay, we're gonna do a three quarter inch binding because half of, three uh, half of uh, an inch and a half is three quarters. That's all the math we're doing, guys. So just think of it as I need double the amount of the fabric of the size of the binding that I want finished. So like I said, I'm gonna do a one inch binding. And so we're gonna come in and we're gonna lay the quilt down on the rotary mat. And so I need to cut two inches. So I'm gonna take my rotary ruler and I'm gonna count one big line, two big lines. Line that up on the edge of your quilt. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna trim off the extra fabric. So we'll move that along, just shift the quilt a little bit, relay everything back out. Oftentimes at this point when we lay this ruler down and we start lining up the lines, where, that's where we start getting uh, critical of our own work. If your edge of your quilt is not perfectly straight, this is not a big deal. You just go ahead, you want to make certain that you're getting two inches of fabric all the way around. So if that means that you need to tilt your ruler a little bit, that's totally fine. The goal is two inches of fabric. We don't want to line up like just straight on this crooked edge and have like two inches and then one and three quarters and two inches just two inches all the way around. And if you have to tip your ruler to make that happen, you go ahead and do. So we'll go ahead and we'll do the last side of the quilt here. So we'll snug that in. Line up our line. And trim down the side. So it takes very little time to prep the quilt to do this binding. And oftentimes if I'm going to do this kind of binding, I kind of try and think about it before I get going with the quilting because I'll audition the color of backing with my last border. So I like the, the way that it looks. All right, so let's get rid of the rotary mat. And I'm gonna hold this quilt up so you can see what it looks like prepped up before we go to the ironing board. Okay, all right. So we're gonna head over here to the ironing board.
and we're going to start with the corners because everybody knows the mitered corners are the scary thing so we're going to get those out of the way so if you remember school and you went to the library they were always telling you in elementary school don't dog ear the corners of books it's not a good thing so that's totally what we're going to do on this quilt so we're going to take and we're going to dog ear the corner of the back over the corner of the quilt and our goal is to have that dog ear start about an eighth of an inch in front of the corner so what's nice i mean my x-ray vision isn't what it used to be so what i do is i get it where i think it should be and then i run my fingers up the edge and i should feel a little space between the fold in the backing fabric and the actual quilt because of the batting that we have in between you'll feel that edge really easily so we want to go ahead and we want to take a look at it we would like both sides of the dog ear to be approximately the same size now ladies i do not get a ruler out and measure this i simply go ahead and eyeball it this would not be what we want so if we come like this where one side is considerably shorter than the other but if we come in and we line up and we just take a look at it should look pretty much the same at that point we're going to come in and we're going to give it a nice hard press you can check it at this point and open it up and you'll see that crease line and we want that crease line to be an eighth of an inch away from the corner of the quilt so if you've got that go ahead and flip that back down you're going to go ahead and do this on all four corners of the quilt so you dog ear everything at once once the dog ears are done you're then going to take and you're going to press the side of the quilt so we're going to take the raw edge that we just cut over here at the rotary cutter station and we're going to take the raw edge and line it up with the cut edge of our quilt where we cut the batting so once again we want it to be like this we don't want it to be like a little boop nor do we want it to go way over the top of the quilt we want it to literally just touch and so we'll go ahead and we'll press that down all the way to the corner and you'll press the entire side and then we'll come over here and we'll press the same on the other side and you will do this on all four sides so we are almost ready to go back to the sewing machine but before we leave the ironing board we want to audition and check our corners to make sure that our corners are exactly what we want so what we're going to do is we're going to fold the corner over on one side and we're going to fold the corner over on the other side now our goal is to have those two edges touching without having to do this so you see if i push them to touch do you see how the corner sticks up and says oh this is not right so uh, i usually find uh, murphy's law in my life uh, is pretty big and so i find that usually one corner is going to be like this which is what i refer to as a blunt corner and i want to show you how to correct that because that's what most people do when they're doing this technique they're like mm, I don't like this I'll just cut it off and do a regular binding so it's a super simple thing if you get a blunt corner you're gonna open it back up and you're gonna dog ear slightly further off of the corner so I'm not really doing a quarter of an inch off the corner I'm just doing a little bit more than an eighth when we go to press this I don't know if you can see it in the camera but this was the original crease from my corner so you can see we gained some fabric and that should make it so that our fabric edges are going to touch so let's go ahead and flip this back over again and that is what we want so I'm going to hit it with the iron so that we can get that nice and flat and then Pam, can you scoot inch on those? 
and that's what we want. We just want it to touch. We want these two edges to line up and we're going to take it and um, we're going to deal with this little piece at the end here. All right. Now, you're going to do that on all four corners. Once you have those four corners done, you're going to grab a marking pen and you're going to take and you're going to mark right along the edge of your binding. So I just made a little mark and here's the amazing thing. Your corners are, you know, you'll get the edges lined up. They'll look perfect. I bet that every four, every corner is going to have a slightly different shape, which is the reason why we don't pre-trim it. Uh, we just trim it for each corner. So we make our mark and then you're going to take your scissor and you're going to cut about an eighth of an inch to the inside of the mark. By doing that, what we're doing is we're making sure that there are going to be no raw edges showing when we're looking it out on the right side. We can't see anything of that little dog ear. All right, so at this point, you're going to go ahead and take your clips or your pins and you're going to pin your binding all the way around. I'm going to put just a few because I'm not going to make you watch me go all the way around this quilt. We'll just do the corner. All right, so we will pretend that I went all the way around and we're going to go ahead and land over at the sewing machine. Right, so we're sitting at the sewing machine. We do want to have either a dual feed or a walking foot on the machine. Anytime you're stitching through batting, you're gonna have a much better time of it if you're doing it with your, um, uh, your walking foot or your dual feed. So on this machine here, the dual feed is built in, so I just pull it down uh, and then gauge the dual feed. If you're putting a walking foot on, usually you're unscrewing your entire presser foot, not just the little button on the back to press the sole off. And you're gonna take that foot off and you're gonna put your walking foot on. When you're doing the, the reason for it is that you've got your feed dogs, the teeth that are at the bottom. So they're pulling that bottom layer and then the dual feed or the walking foot is pulling the top layer. So they kind of come together and pull back release, jump forward. And so that way you don't get a binding that has like a diagonal pull to it. It's going to lay perfectly flat. Now in real life, not in demo land, um, real life, I would start right at the corner of my quilt here and I would go down and I would work my way around. I'm going to start here on the side so that I can show you what I like to do for top stitching my corner down. So we're going to jump in. I'm going to be stitching about an eighth of an inch in from the edge of the binding. And what I do is I use kind of the inside edge of my toe as a guide. So I'm running the inside edge of the toe running right along the edge of my binding. If I feel the need to get a little closer or further away, I can simply use my needle position on my machine and position the needle exactly where I would like it to be. But I do find it very helpful, ladies, to have a something hard physical for me to run the edge of my quilt. That way I'm not watching my needle bounce up and down all the way around the edge of my quilt. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So we'll stitch along. I usually am running at about three in stitch length uh, because I am going through batting and I like that kind of top stitched look. So we're going to come along and we're heading up to our corner. When I get about an eighth of an inch from the corner, I'm going to stop with my needle down. So there's two approaches to this corner. I could go and go all the way to the corner and then just turn and pivot. And then I could come back later on and hand whip this uh, miter, 
which is perfectly legal to do, but we've already discussed I don't do a lot of handwork. Um, so what I like to do is give it a top stitched appearance. So I come an eighth of an inch before the, the actual miter itself. I sink my needle, I raise my foot, and I turn the quilt. We'll try and get this position so you can see it in the camera. And so I am now running right along the edge of my miter. Once again, about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the miter. So we're gonna stitch it. And I'm gonna go until I get close to the corner but not right on top. Sink my needle back down, raise my foot, and I'm gonna turn my quilt at a 90 degree again. We'll put the foot down and we're gonna stitch across. Sometimes one stitch, sometimes two but I now want to be about an eighth of an inch on the other side of our miter. So we'll then pick up the foot, we'll turn it around again, put the foot back down, and I'm just going to take with a pin or a, a seam ripper or a stiletto, I'm going to come and hold those miters together and I'm going to stitch down about an eighth of an inch to the end again. I just want to lift this foot to check to make sure I'm, eh, I think maybe one more stitch. There we go. And then we're going to take it, raise up our foot, and then off we go down the side of our miter and the side of our, our quilt. So we would continue all the way around and then I would do the same thing uh, for each one of the corners. So we'll go ahead and we'll cut our thread here so we can put this up close to the camera so you can see. So this is what the miter is going to look like. So you'll see that it lays perfectly flat. So we're, we're not going. Put it down so we can see the in the line. Okay, there you go. Is that better? Yeah. All right, so you can see it lays perfectly flat. It's not, the corner's not bending up or going back and we're stitching along and those edges are matching up beautifully and our corner is lining up from there. Pam's going to try and focus in so you can get a really close shot here. And by the way ladies, uh, Pam is going to be uh, in front of the camera next week um, instead of behind the camera and I'm going to do her cameraman duties. Um, and so she's going to be doing a quick, uh, quick and easy pillowcase um, for the demo next week. So if you have any questions, uh, give us an email, uh, it, you know, and to, and we'll try and answer those. Uh, keep the topics coming. Uh, from last week's demo, we had a couple of really, really great um, topics for, the, for uh, future videos. So we'll keep trying to, to incorporate those in on our video, uh, creative videos. So thank you once again for uh, sharing this time with me. Uh, we look forward to the time when we can see you, um, you know, face-to-face -face teaching wise. But in the meantime, this will do. See ya.